you're next. I once helped Damon Hill to Grand Prix success by presenting him with a pre-race snack. David's team. <laughs> well, it certainly tripped off the tongue. <laughs> Thank you. Um, what was the snack? A scotch egg. <laughs> and is there a definite correlation between him eating that scotch egg and him being successful? He um, felt that the scotch egg had helped him succeed in the race. He told me so. Is Damon Hill a close friend, Bob? No, no. <laughs> then why were you giving him food stuff? <laughs> well, I'd been invited to the Grand Prix. Which Grand Prix? The, the British. In, in, in which year? Think. <laughs> 1996, David, but I'm not willing to exclude four years either side of that. <laughs> Put it this way, it was definitely one of the decades. <laughs> Do you like racing, then? No, I'm not a, a Formula One fan. Right. I probably uh, prefer soil science. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Who was he driving for? He was driving for one, uh, a company. Um, oh. that had right. very fast company cars. <laughs> <laughs> so, why were you permitted access to a major racing driver? Because his manager, yeah. Yeah, Shane Tobacco... <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I can't remember his you name. You can't remember his name. Shane, uh, or whoever it was, was also with another bloke, you know, benefiting from hospitality. What was his name? Let's say Top Heavy Ken. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember we went upstairs on the bus, Damon was there, he had a bed in there. Like a sort of Winnebago. Yeah. And it had, you know, mugs with I love cars, I love, <laughs> I love hand brakes, I love headrests. And this is the day of the race. David, this is just like an hour and a half before the an race. An hour and a half oh, before the race. You've turned up an hour and a half early, because even though you're more into soil science, you want to soak up the atmosphere <laughs> with a good hour and a half of... Yeah. waiting before the televised traffic begins. Yes. <laughs> so you turn up. The last thing Damon needs before a race is any quiet time. He just wants a bit of hubbub <laughs> on his bus. Were there any other people there apart from you and Shane and Damon? I was with my wife as well, yeah. OK. And, um... Top heavy can. <laughs> 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 so me and the wife went up. I think when you go to someone's home or their Winnie Bag or whatever, you should. Do you know, like, if you're going to a dinner party at someone's house, you'll always take them a bottle of vinegar, yeah? <laughs> cool. So your gift to thank him for the hospitality was a scotch egg? No. Oh. I call it pocket meat. Whenever I'm out away from... Whenever I'm away from the house, I have pocket meat. Yeah. That's who I have, like, a chicken leg or pork pie. <laughs> And I thought, I've got some pocket meat. It was a scotch egg in its cellophane. And I said, Damon, we all know that um, if you pop a sausage roll in an American's pocket, it brings him good luck. <laughs> I said, maybe a scotch egg would work for a British fella like you. Is, and I gave it to him. Is that a thing? Yeah, very what, much. What, that so. if you put meat in, a, in an American's pocket? It's processed meat. Have you ever heard of that? <laughs> not, not really, no. No. It's all been a bit of a lot of talking. <laughs> <laughs> I've forgotten yeah. the original bit of the story. Did he eat said scotch egg before uh, the race? I, I'll yeah, never yeah. know, Samantha, but after the race, he said that he took the scotch egg round with him. He swore he did. In the I, pub? I don't know whether he put it in the glove box on the passenger seat. <laughs> <laughs> he ate it. But, Bob, you're not claiming that he ate the egg. All I say is, is that when I was watching, when, when Damon went past, in his tailwind, a person next to me said, Damon's tailwind smelt really meggy, which, <laughs> which, of course, is meat and egg. Meat and egg. Okay. So, what, what are we thinking, Sam? Do you know what? Sometimes stories are so mad that they've got to be true. What I would say here is be wary when it comes to Bob. Oh, OK. <laughs> Do you remember, David, that I think it was the last time Bob was with us, he told us Chris Rea told him he yeah. put an egg into his bath. I can't even remember. Was mm. that true? No. But you believed it was true? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Miles, what are you thinking? Well, I'm... 
I think that you're sort of somewhat cynically using this as an opportunity to tout your kind of charms. <laughs> and you're hoping to kind of drum up work and then your agent's going to get lots of phone calls saying, well, would Bob Mortimer be able to sort of slip Gareth Bale a pasty and stuff like this? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a lie. You think it's a lie, but you think it's true? I'm on the fence. Oh, dear. This is a horrible situation. I don't know. My instinct is it's a lie. You're saying lie? OK. Yeah. Bob Mortimer. Uh, a lucky scotch egg for Damon Hill at the British Grand Prix. <laughs> truth or lie? <laughs> I was telling the truth. <laughs> Situation. <laughs> One egg thing's true, the other egg thing. How can I have disbelieved the wrong egg thing? <laughs> so, so obviously, what they'd make up some random thing about an egg and a long departed 90s celebrity. <laughs> Is he dead? He's not. No, he's not dead. He's just, you never hear from him. What does Damon Hill do now? He's probably into soil science. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Our ear next round. expert. It's my, Miles for me, thing. You Miles? Yeah, cos I have so many problems with my bottom, yeah? <laughs> that I walk into the doctor's surgery like this, and he just says, <laughs> Hello, Mr. Mortimer. <laughs> <laughs> but the you Miles, say it's Miles. For me, yeah. Have you had similar examinations? Every single week. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Sarah? Who are you going to say? 